so we're on stage finishing up at the end of a show. We hit the lights to go home, but just as they're dimming, we see this figure enter the auditorium and start climbing up the stairs to the control room. One technician runs up the stairs to follow them, and I go out to the foyer to head them off. Now the control room has a back door that opens out to the foyer, and as I get closer, I hear it open and shut. I get to the top of the foyer stairs, and I meet the other technician just as they come out of the control room. There's no one else. We search the venue, but we can't find anything. By the time either of us got to that door, there should have been someone on that walkway. One of us should have seen something. The other tech also heard the door open and shut. We think it was Edward. Edward Potter was one of the earliest caretakers of the Dandenong Town Hall. He took up the post in 1906 and lived on the grounds with his wife Eliza and their children. Their house once stood where the drum theatre foyer is today. Eliza died in 1922 and in 1925 Edward himself died. Since then, ghostly sounds have been heard in the Dandenong Town Hall and ever since the building reopened as the drum theatre in 2006, staff have often heard and felt a presence upstairs while they are working alone. Working in the office, it sounds like someone is walking from the reading room towards the clock tower, checking all the doorknobs as they go by. Staff originally thought it was a lady, but it is said the footsteps sounded heavier and more like a man's boots walking down. Sometimes, when office workers are working a later shift, when the sun starts to set and darkness begins to fall, the sound of children playing and laughing can be heard from the foyer. Sometimes another voice can be heard telling the children to shh. The sounds come from the Walker Street window area where the caretaker and his wife and children once lived. The lift does some funny things at random times. Usually it's after you get a funny feeling in the foyer, like the kids are there playing. <laughs> then the lift starts doing random stuff like skipping levels, moving on its own, and it's always after you get that feeling. Every now and again, when you're alone late at night, you just get this sense that someone else is in the building, watching. Sometimes, you can hear keys jangling. Every now and again, when the entire crew is on stage, you hear the creaking of someone walking up in the fly tower. It's not the building settling, it's the distinct sound of a person moving around up there. You can be up on the grid of the theatre, and it's normally quite warm up there because all the heat from the light rises, but if you're up there by yourself late at night, sometimes it can suddenly get very cold. You get goosebumps and you can see your own breath. You get this feeling like you've been told, it's time to go home now. Have you heard about the time that the bells of the clock tower just started chiming for no reason continuously? We couldn't turn it off, because the switch was already off. It just so happened to be about one day before the 75th anniversary of the clock's construction. I'm told when the clock tower first rang, it rang continuously for an hour. Then around the anniversary, it starts ringing again at about two o'clock in the morning, for about an hour as well before the chimes were finally turned off. In all buildings like this, you see and hear a lot as a technician, because you're the first to arrive and usually the last to leave. At least the last living thing to leave. We mentioned earlier that some people believed there was a woman haunting the upstairs corridor, while others heard heavy bootsteps and felt it was a male presence. But perhaps it's both. Legend has it that during a debutante ball held at the old town hall, a young debutante passed away. While we were unable to obtain any details on this event, several staff members of the theatre claimed to have seen or felt a female figure roaming the upstairs corridor. The first time it happened, I was clearing up after a function and I thought everybody had left and I started hearing some noises. And I'm thinking, is somebody still here who hasn't left yet? I went back upstairs and I'm cleaning up and I could still hear loud noises, banging noises. I thought I saw a light was on the reading room, but when I went back, it was off. I didn't mention it to anyone. Later, I used to do these early morning breakfast meetings in the reading room. I was there about 5.30 in the morning and I turned everything on, the lights, the heating, everything, and went to get the coffee ready. I went back and the light was off. So you know how you question yourself? I was sure I turned it all on. So I turned everything back on and went back to the kitchen. I went back to the reading room and all the lights were off again. It happened a few times, every now and then, every month or so maybe. I don't know why, I just felt like it was a girl, a female. It would happen every so often like they were playing with me. So maybe it was one of the children from the caretaker. It happened a lot, but it hasn't happened for ages. 
I was at the end of a night shift on my way up the heritage stairs and about halfway up, like on that first landing, I felt that sense like maybe someone else was there. And I guess I looked downstairs because of that and, and I saw what looked like a figure downstairs, kind of at a glance before I looked away. And then I did a double take back to it and it was still there. It, it wasn't one of those things where you catch something out of the corner of your eye and then you look and it's gone. I did the double take and when I looked back, it looked distinctly like the figure of a woman in a white dress sort of thing. But I, I knew it wasn't a person. I sort of thought to myself, well, that shouldn't be there. I, I shouldn't be seeing this. And so I looked away. A moment later, I looked back and she just wasn't there anymore. Not in a puff of smoke or anything like that. She was just gone. But rest assured, despite all we have told you about the history and the ghostly stories surrounding drum theatre, you are highly unlikely to experience anything spooky or otherworldly on your visit to us. Your theatrical experience should be brightly lit, populated and decidedly unparanormal. We hope. After all, most of these stories come from staff who've been working late, alone, as the night was falling, 